Right now, a family waiting for justice after a disabled elderly woman is attacked in broad daylight. What they're saying is the trial for the man accused begins. Also disturbing new details on a teenager accused in a deadly hit and run that took the life of an Oregon man. The shocking number of charges he's currently facing. And later, Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Trump agree to a live debate when and where you'll be able to watch. All ahead on News Three Now at 6. The prosecution is underway for the man accused of attacking an elderly disabled woman in Shorewood Hills. Last summer, our Maddie Himes was in the courtroom today and spoke with the victim's family. Maddie? Yeah, Eric, the victim, 69 years old at the time of the attack, has Parkinson's disease. Her sister says she had been managing her symptoms well, but since the attack in June of 2023, she's been using a walker and facing other complications. Throughout my sister's Parkinson's, she's never complained about her condition, but things are very different after the assault. Audrey Lombardi was with her sister in the grocery store parking lot when Ramsey Hammond Jr. allegedly approached to rob her and threw her to the ground, shattering her elbow. We see her struggle to do things which would never have been an issue previously, like things as simple as holding her grandchildren or playing with them on the floor or walking her dog are now challenging and painful. Lombardi tells me more than a year later, the woman is still working to recover from the attack, both mentally and physically. Hammond has a previous criminal conviction for harming a woman with cerebral palsy. Lombardi says her family is frustrated that her sister isn't his only disabled victim. The experience has been frustrating, disappointing, and um, very much filled with anxiety. So we're just, we're just praying that this doesn't happen to any other person. Hammond has been charged with two felonies, robbery with use of force and substantial battery, and one misdemeanor, criminal damage to property. All charges include penalty enhancers as the victim was elderly. Hammond's plea hearing was to take place today. He did appear in court while the victim attended over the phone. But due to a technical error, the hearing was delayed. It's now set for August 26th. Well, Maddie, thank you. Now to continuing coverage of a deadly hit and run that took the life of an Oregon man. We're learning more about the extensive criminal history of the 14-year-old Milwaukee boy accused in this incident. That boy facing 25 counts for a host of crime. 24 of them are felonies. There are 13 counts of armed robbery in a span of just six weeks. At least four stolen cars are involved. Some of these incidents happen when the child was just 13. On July 27th, he robbed a couple at gunpoint. While officers investigated, he tried to break into another car a few blocks away. Police went there and he fled, tried to break into another vehicle, fled again, then blew a stop sign and hit 31-year-old motorcyclist Mark Jones near First and Walker Streets in Milwaukee. Jones later died at the hospital. He was visiting Milwaukee for the annual Harley Davidson homecoming. The boy was arrested at his aunt's house July 31st. He's currently in custody with a $200,000 bond. The Sauk County Sheriff's Office dive team found quite the surprise in the Wisconsin River yesterday. Check it out, a Red Pontiac Grand Prix from the Wisconsin River near the Lone Rock Bridge. The Richland County Sheriff's Office identified and located the owner of this vehicle and determined it had been stolen out of Monroe County 34 years ago, back in 1990. An investigation will continue to determine how the vehicle ended up in the river near the bridge. Richland County Sheriff's Office said at this point there are no suspicious items that were located within the vehicle there. No injuries were reported. Chances of isolated showers today? A check of your first one forecast. Here's meteorologist Alex Harrington. Alex? Eric, we did have a couple sprinkles across southern Wisconsin today. As a cold front's been moving through the area, we were mentioning yesterday we could have a couple of sprinkles and Clouds have been struggling to clear the area, but they are doing so right now as we speak out here on the patio. The wind's starting to pick up too, as well as cooler air is going to usher into southern Wisconsin. Your patio forecast for tonight calls for temperatures cooling down all the way into the low to mid 60s by the time you join us again for your 10 o'clock newscast. A beautiful evening overall, but we get some really chilly air on the way to southern Wisconsin. Winds west northwest at 8, but it's been gusting at times higher than that. The dew point was in the 60s today, just to touch a touch of mugginess out ahead of that cold front. Now we're already way down into the upper 50s. That's dry air moving into southern Wisconsin with that temperature warming up now. That's the warmest we've been at 77. Interestingly, as we dry out, temperatures have the ability to warm up faster. So that's where we're actually reaching our high temperatures right now, plus with the sun coming out. I was uh, wondering if we were going to get closer to 78, but with the clouds clearing out and now that we're drying out, we're going to be pretty close to that 78 degree forecast from yesterday. A little cooler off to the northwest, though, in the upper 60s, trade around 70. That's that cooler air moving in 
from northwest to southeast up towards Vernon County and Juneau and Adams counties. We will see highs only in the lower 70s Friday if we're lucky. And again on Saturday, average high temperatures are right around 80 degrees for this time of year. And the wind gusts are going to get pretty gusty as we go Friday on into your Saturday, pushing 25 to 30 mile per hour winds Friday and Saturday, adding a little extra chill to the air. But when can you expect those temperatures to rebound back to normal? I have the answer for you in a few minutes. All right, Alex, thank you. You'll, you'll soon start getting more alerts to help find missing children. Today, Wisconsin Attorney General Josh Call announcing the launch of the state's new expanded alert system. Lawmakers passed the new law earlier this year. It's called the Prince Act, named after five-year-old Prince McCree. Prince went missing in Milwaukee. It was also inspired by 10-year-old Lily Peters, who went missing in Chippewa Falls. Both children ended up dead. Neither case met the state's strict Amber Alert criteria. The bipartisan act changes the requirements needed to issue an alert. It does that by expanding the definition of a, quote, person at risk to include children. This will make it easier for law enforcement to notify the public when a child goes missing. To campaign 2024 news now, federal authorities are on alert for possible retaliatory attacks against Democrats after the attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump. That's according to a threat assessment outlining potential security concerns surrounding the upcoming Democratic National Convention in Chicago. The FBI, the Department of Homeland Security, and other agencies, including local police in Illinois, jointly prepared the report. It found people in some online communities have threatened, encouraged, or referenced act of violence in response to the Trump assassination attempt. However, it noted authorities have not identified any specific or credible threats. Meanwhile, ABC says former President Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris have agreed to a debate on September 10th. Trump re rejoining the ABC debate days after posting on social media that he would not appear on the network, citing a lawsuit he has filed. The announcement came shortly after Trump told the press that he had proposed three presidential debates with three television networks saying he agreed on on certain dates in September. The city of Madison is hoping to give veterans more access to affordable housing. That's thanks to some new federal funding. HUD awarded the Madison Community Development Authority more than $68,000 to improve the Department of Veterans Affairs Supportive Housing, or VASH, program. The program helps veterans experiencing homelessness find housing and also support through vouchers to help them pay their rent with case management and other supportive service through the VA. We are at a point where we are serving almost 200 veterans through the program here in Madison. Um, and I'm very excited to announce that with this additional funds, this additional flexibility, um, we'll be able to continue to grow that program and get veterans into housing faster um, with less money out of pocket. Well, city officials say there are roughly 8,000 veterans currently living right here in Madison. Governor Tony Evers and the Department of Transportation looking to help communities complete road improvement projects. Today announcing $174 million in state funding will be used over the next five years. 1,003 projects were picked to get that funding based on recommendations from county, municipal, and town officials. The final 2023-25 biennial budget also included an additional $100 million for supplemental funds to be doled out for county trunk highway improvements, town road improvements, and municipal street improvements through local road improvement projects. Universities of Wisconsin President Jay Rothman appeared before a legislative council today considering the future of the UW system. It is the second meeting of the committee so far looking at what taxpayers are getting out of the $1.3 billion spent annually on UW colleges and universities. As state campuses see major challenges, Rothman pointed to the state being 43rd in the nation in public funding for higher education. He says he hopes to build trust with lawmakers that an investment in the UW system is an investment in the state moving forward. I mean, we are here as the universities of Wisconsin to serve the state of Wisconsin. These investments are not for the universities of Wisconsin. They are focused on trying to help Wisconsin become better and be, be the great state that it, that it is. Now, the committee is tasked with finding a way for the UW to deal with challenges and demographics and finances. They're expected to have suggestions for lawmakers sometime next year. Right now, we are helping make sure local students are prepared for the classroom. News 3 now teaming up with the Boys and Girls Club of Dane County for our annual Stuff the Bus Back to School Supply Drive. Supplies can be donated anytime now through next Friday, August 16th, and we're collecting backpacks, pencils, pens, lunch boxes, and other essentials needed to make sure students see a successful return to the classroom. Just stop by any Boys and Girls Club location or News 3 Now and you can make a donation. Coming up on News 3 Now at 6, why Samsung is putting out a recall for some of their stoves. Plus, it's not just vaccinations kids should be getting before the school year begins, what the Department of Health Services is also recommending. Stay with us. You're watching News
News 3 Now at 6. Brought to you by Ruber Law Offices. When a truck accident happens, the results can be catastrophic. Our dedicated and proven team is here to help, and there's never a fee until we win. Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. Mark, a little help here? Oh, keep it down. The noise is making them angry. Whoa. Hey, I'm not a beekeeper, but I can replace these windows fast. Let Feldco be the experts in your home renewal. Right now, buy one window and you'll get one free. Plus, no interest until 2026. And we'll get it done Feldco fast. Buy one window, get one free, and soon. Hurry. Call now. Call 866 for Feldco. Joe Biden made Kamala Harris border czar to fix immigration. First, she ignored it. Do you have any plans? to visit the border. I, I, at some point. Then she just lied. The border is secure. 10 million illegal immigrants, migrant crime out of control, fentanyl kills thousands. We have a secure border. Kamala Harris, failed, weak, dangerously liberal. I'm Donald Trump and I approve this message. Winning at Ho-Chunk Gaming just got bigger, like mega bigger. When you win a hand-paid jackpot at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells, you're automatically entered into our mega jackpot winner's quarterly drawings with a grand prize drawing on October 26 to win a new Dodge Ram 2500 Laramie and a chance for $100,000 in cash. Jackpot weekly drawings are going on now. Mondays, 10 winners, $500 in rewards play. Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dells. Your odds are better here. Moving forward in your community. Lending helping hands. Spotlighting the people. Telling the stories. Warning you first. Your local news source. For nearly 70 years. News 3 Now. Moving forward. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. Welcome back. As we inch closer to the new school year, the Wisconsin Department of Health Services is recommending blood lead testing for all children. All children should get at least two lead tests by age two. Children three to five should get tested if they have no record of a previous test. Lead poisoning can impact a child's growth, behavior, and IQ. Even if there are no clear signs of lead poisoning, lead can still affect the body. The only way to know if a child is exposed to lead is to test them at your doctor's office. Most of the exposure for childhood lead poisoning comes from a chipped or peeling lead-based paint in homes or structures built before 1978. Um, there are other possible exposure sources that include soil, um, some old vintage painted toys, some food exposures such as spices, some drinking water, and then any occupational or hobby exposures that parents or caregivers may take, take part in. Now, if you're not sure if your child has been tested for lead, ask your pediatrician. Children of any age can be tested if there's any concern about lead exposure. Boar's Head is now facing a potential class action lawsuit after a deadly listeria outbreak was linked to its deli meat. That lawsuit was filed in a New York district court on August 1st. The plaintiff alleges the company misled consumers by not properly warning them of the contamination in its initial recall on July 25th. That recall involved 200,000 pounds of its ready-to-eat and deli meat products. The recall was expanded days later to include 7 million pounds of its meat products. So far, dozens of people have reported illnesses. Three people have died. Samsung is issuing a safety recall because of a design flaw in some of its stoves. The Consumer Product Safety Commission said about 1.1 million units are affected here, including both gas and electric ranges. If a flammable object is on top of the range, pets, even humans, can start a fire by bumping into the knobs. Several videos have shown pets accidentally igniting fires by jumping out of stoves or hitting those knobs. Samsung will provide free knob locks or covers for affected products. Still ahead, why the days of using your friend's Costco membership card are over. Also, after surviving one of the deadly forms of cancer, how a Madison woman is using her story to help find a cure. And temperatures cooling off just a bit, but by how much? Alex has the answer. His complete forecast when we come back. Melissa Ratcliffe, a working mom, is the only woman running for state senate in District 16. Republicans in the state senate are attacking abortion access. Melissa Ratcliffe will always defend reproductive freedom. Melissa Ratcliffe, a proven fighter for our rights. Tens of millions of roofs across America are failing. 
wearing out decades early and leaking, oftentimes without you knowing about it, causing tremendous damage. Here's how you know you have a problem with your roof. Black streaking, your roof looks rough, or granules shedding off into your gutters or showing up in your driveway. Your roof is wearing out too fast and it's going to cost you a bundle. RoofMax makes your roof like new by strengthening and rejuvenating it. So give us a call and we'll give you a free assessment to see if your roof qualifies. Baraboo Furniture and Mattress is celebrating Wisconsin's hot summer months with a huge hot summer sale. Save from 20 to 60% off every item store-wide. Over a million dollars of quality name brands on display in our beautiful new showroom, including Smith Brothers, Flex Steel, England, Ashley, Spring Air, Amish Furniture, and much more, all on sale. Get special free financing, all credit welcome. Hurry in today to the huge store-wide hot summer sale at Baraboo Furniture and Mattress, where your satisfaction is our guarantee. If you're watching this Gerber Life Guaranteed Life Insurance commercial, there's a good chance that you're alive. And if you're not, well, this may not be of interest to you. Now, I know what you're thinking. Life insurance? I'm going to live forever. Death is what happens to other people. Well, for the sake of argument, let's assume you're wrong and that someday you won't be watching TV anymore. I know it's not easy to talk about, so I'll do the talking. If you're 50 plus and alive, you can apply for Gerber Life Guaranteed Life Insurance with guaranteed acceptance, regardless of your health. And since this life insurance is guaranteed, you don't have to get a medical exam. In fact, you don't even have to fill out a health questionnaire. For a free quote, just call 800-387-9724. Then when you stop, I mean, if you stop watching TV, your family can use the insurance money to help cover your final expenses or anything else. For a free quote, Call today, 800-387-9724. Your kids already inherited your ears, allergies, and questionable singing voice. Don't make them inherit your final expense tab, too. Melissa Radcliffe works across the aisle to make positive things happen, expanding broadband, making housing more affordable. Melissa Radcliffe knows that Wisconsinites need progress, not partisan bickering. Melissa Radcliffe, common sense leadership, proven results. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. Pancreatic cancer has a five-year survival rate of just 13%, making it one of the deadliest forms of cancer. One Madison woman beat the odds and now is using her story to advocate for more research. Our Ellie LaLiberté joins us now with her story. Ellie? Charlie Fulton is many things. She's a quilter, a hiker, and a survivor. Pancreatic cancer is hard to spot because those battling the illness often don't have warning signs until they're at stage four. At that point, the cancer can spread throughout the body. Some warning signs of pancreatic cancer include yellowing behind the eyes, abdominal pain, and weight loss. Fulton says when she was diagnosed, she didn't know any survivors. Only about 15 to 20 percent of the people are eligible for the surgery. For most people, it's already too late. There should be 90 percent of us still live alive at five years. And it shouldn't just be me. Fulton will continue to raise awareness this Sunday at a fundraiser with the UW-Madison Carbone Cancer Center. The goal is to raise $200,000 to put towards research during the annual Roll and Stroll event. For Charlie's full story, you can head to channel3000.com. Ellie, thank you. Temperatures staying below average into the weekend. Alex joins us now once again. His complete forecast, Alex. Yeah, Eric, some folks may consider this a pretty refreshing stretch of weather for southern Wisconsin. In fact, it may be the quietest stretch of weather that we've had really since severe weather season start. Recall February 8th, earlier this year, where we had that historic tornado in Evansville. And from then, it has been a busy weather season. And this is just wonderful in southern Wisconsin that we have these temperatures in the upper 70s. Dew points now are starting to fall into the upper 50s behind a cold front that came through rather dry. Just a couple of isolated sprinkles with this front. And this is a thing to come now over the next few days. Temperatures cooling off, very refreshing. We got 77 in Madison, 77 in Middleton, but watch what happens when I zoom out here. Look off towards the north and west. Viroqua at 69 degrees, 71 in Camp Douglas. Cooler air is starting to fill in on those northwestern, northwesterly breezes into southern Wisconsin. Eric had mentioned earlier, how cold are we going to get? 71. That's all we're going to do on Friday. That's 10 degrees below normal. 73 on Saturday when average highs right around 80 degrees for this time of year. Most of the time we're thinking dog days of summer, 80s, temperatures at nighttime in the 60s and a bit muggy. Nothing like that for this weekend. We'll be back up to 77 by Sunday. So a little bit warmer as we head towards the end of the weekend. Breezy conditions as well to add just a slight crispness to the air Friday and Saturday gusting at times of 25 
25 to maybe 30 miles per hour. They'll ease up later Saturday and the wind should not be gu as gusty on Sunday. Rain chances few and far between until we get out into next week. As we carry forth further into next week, temperatures will also rebound back up to near normal. This bl bl uh, blue line is near normal 81 right now and then 80 at the end of the 10 day period. And with the temperatures warming up and the rain chances increasing, that's supported by our friends at the Climate Prediction Center. Increasing chances of showers and thunderstorms for the northern half of the country really here. The southern portion of the United States will be under high pressure. And what we call this is a ridge where we have all that warm and humid air that pushes towards the north and on the peripheral of that, it's called the ring of fire. That's where we get those showers and thunderstorms on the northern and western and eastern edges of that bubble of warm air. And that's what's heading towards southern Wisconsin. With the warmer temperatures, with the increase in rainfall chances, we're going to see the muggy meter very comfy over the course of the weekend. Dew points probably falling into the upper 40s to right around 50. Then the dew points are going to slowly work their way up back into the muggy and humid range by the time we get to Tuesday of next week. We could be looking at dew points in the mid 60s. And the thunderstorm chances start to increase by Tuesday with the dew points increasing those low temperatures at night will also stay on the mild side in the 60s and 80s by day. So we're going to go from almost fall like weather right back to August weather in the next few days. All right, Alex, thank you. Costco says it'll be using scanning devices at store entrances where members will have to scan their cards. Members will have to show a photo ID if their card doesn't have a photo on it. Costco says the scanning devices will be installed in the coming months. That's not the only change either that Costco is implementing as it tries to crack down on people sharing their membership cards. Guests will now have to be accompanied by a valid card holder in order to enter a Costco store. The company announced last month that it was raising membership fees by $5 starting in September. That marks the first time Costco has raised its membership fees since 2017. And coming up in sports, history in Atlanta. The big at bats a brewer had that put him in the record books. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Earn a 25 cent high V fuel saver for every $50 you spend this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's a 25 cent fuel saver for every $50 Friday, Saturday, and Sunday only at high V. Get an 11% rebate on everything in Menards. Performax Steel Shelving is the ultimate storage solution. They hold up to 2,000 pounds per shelf. Get this three tier heavy duty shelving unit for $154.99 after rebate. Keep your car running its best with FVP conventional motor oil. It features anti wear agents and corrosion inhibitors. A five quart jug is $13.99 after 11% rebate at Menards. America's number one home improvement retailer for customer satisfaction. Save big money at Menards. Chainlink is out and aluminum is in this season. These aluminum fences are not only beautiful and durable, but backed by a lifetime warranty too. Act fast. Revamp is offering $1,000 off a qualified purchase plus a free single gate. Scan the code, check us out online, or give us a call for your free quote today. I'm Tammy Baldwin. I approve this message. I'm the proud son of a single mom. My mom worked nights nice to provide for us. My mom worked 80 hours a week. But Eric Hovde thinks if you have a single mom, you're going to be poor or a drug addict? That is a direct path to a life of poverty. It leads to higher drug rates. That just shows Eric Hovde is ignorant. Come on, I'm successful today because of my mom. I learned my work ethic from my mom, my single mom. What is wrong with this guy? Right now, we're running our 60-60-60 sale. So when you purchase your new concrete coating, you get a $60 Visa gift card, plus either 60% off installation or 60-month no interest financing. This is one of our best deals of the year. So visit our website or call the number for your new floor today. Empire's quality and customer service were absolutely amazing. The installers were so conscientious. I have and I will continue to recommend Empire. 800-588-2300, Empire. Today. Certain this is gonna work? Nothing to it. For imprint certain? Certainty matters. For imprint is your home for promo gear to wow clients and inspire your team. Check out forimprint.com. For imprint, for certain. Earn a 
25 cent high vee fuel saver for every $50 you spend this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's a 25 cent fuel saver for every $50 Friday, Saturday, and Sunday only at high vee In the first two games of their series in Atlanta, the Brewers were feeling it in the batter's box. 18 runs on 32 hits, and that offensive onslaught continued in their series finale. Now, the last time the Brewers swept the Braves in the ATL, 2016, and they were loving the long ball today. Jackson Churio sends a two-run jack to center for one of his two bombs on the day. He becomes the youngest Brewer in franchise history to hit two home runs in a game. As a team, they hit six home runs and brought the brooms out. They sweep the Braves 16 to seven. Well, Greg Gard added another piece to his team's non-conference schedule this afternoon. Wisconsin will take on Butler in Indianapolis, part of this year's Indy Classic on December 14th. The two will hit the court at Gamebridge Fieldhouse following Purdue and Texas A&M's game. And the two programs have met 31 times with the Badgers leading the all-time series 17 to 14. It will be the first meeting between the two since 2011 when they faced off in the Sweet 16. On the women's side, the schedule has been set for their Cancun challenge during the week of Thanksgiving. Marissa Mosley's squad will open up with San Diego State, then take on Providence the following day and close out the round robin tournament against VC. And Lauren Carlini and Dana Recchi will play for a gold medal as USA Volleyball took down Brazil three to two in five sets to advance to Sunday's gold medal match. Carlini finished with five assists and had some big digs in the, set, the final set. She finished with eight. Retke did not play. A lot of Wisconsin flavor, though, and Kenny yeah. Van Eric, what a, what a performance. Yeah, well, he again. said, Lyles can do all the talking, but I'm going to beat him, and he just, beat him. He just shut up and run, <laughs> yeah. right? Let's go to Alex, final check of the forecast. Picture perfect weather tonight, lasting really out into the early part of next week. We'll clear out tonight. That allows the temperatures to really cool off. We'll see lows in the low 50s. Dry in a cooler weekend, at least through Saturday, with warmer temps, I promise, we'll come back by the time we actually get to Sunday, but not before we see highs. 71 on Friday, that's all we're going to do. 73 on Saturday. Once we get beyond Sunday, then August returns. Turns. We'll have temperatures back up near 80, lows in the 60s, and those shower and storm chances increasing again. All right, Alex, thanks. Thanks for joining us. For News 3 Now at 6, have a great evening. We'll be back here tonight for News 3 Now at 10.